Hey guys, so in another video I talked about my symptoms along with um, getting bounced from doctor to doctor and the amount of time it took to figure out I had Lyme disease. And when I went back and listened to the video I realized there were quite a few symptoms that I overlooked. So I wanted to make another video to go a little more in depth about my symptoms. And I'm actually going to be reading from the Horowitz Lyme MSIDS questionnaire. It's a really good checklist of um, symptoms to kind of figure out if you might have Lyme disease, if you have some sort of mystery illness. So if you want to have a um, go along with me to take a deeper dive into my symptoms then keep listening. Okay, I'm going to start out by saying my animals are being crazy tonight, so I have a feeling they're going to make a guest appearance. They seem to always do that, but anyway. So as I said, I'm going to be reading from the Horowitz Lyme Questionnaire. It's a checklist of 53 different items that are 53 different um, symptoms that can be Lyme related. So I'm just going to read through and talk about my symptoms or have my experience with each symptom. So the first one is unexplained fevers, sweat, chills, or flushing. I had night sweats. I had drenching night sweats, so I'd have to get up in the night and change my clothes because I was so soaked in the night. Unexplained weight change, so I'd be loss or gain. I actually gained 22 pounds. I was infected for 14 months before I had a major flare-up, and in that time I gained 22 pounds. Now my understanding of that from a functional doctor I worked with is that when the body is overloaded with toxins, it doesn't quite know what to do with those, so it'll store them in fat cells, so that can be why some of us gain weight. Once I had my flare-up, I started losing weight. I was losing three pounds a week without trying, so it was just an unexplained weight loss at that point. Fatigue, tiredness, um, the fatigue is crushing, it's debilitating. Um, I mean, it, it's so bad that I can pull into a parking space in my car and fall asleep in the car. It is never relieved by sleep. Taking a nap is a waste of time. It's horrible. Coffee, you know, caffeine drinks, forget it. They seem to make it worse. Um, unexplained hair loss. In the very beginning, um, I never lost clumps of hair, but I had a definite increase in my shedding patterns where in the mornings when I wash my hair, I was losing a lot more hair than normal, so my hair definitely thinned out. Um, in my other video, I explained that's why I, I cut off about six inches recently because the hair is growing back out, so I was just leveling it back up. Swollen glands. Now, my glands never got big and swollen, but I did have... Um, my lymph nodes in my neck were achy. Sore throat, I don't remember having sore throats. Um, pelvic pain, uh, I don't necessarily remember that. Unexplained menstrual irregularity, I my periods were getting shorter and lighter. Um, unexplained breast pain, I don't didn't have any of that. Irritable bladder or bladder dysfunction, that was um, one of my first things as well. I'd actually been to the doctor a few times before my flare up because it felt like I had a constant bladder infection just like a never-ending bladder infection. Um, sexual dysfunction or loss of libido, definitely had loss of libido, and I think that, um, you know, that can be really trying on a relationship. Upset stomach, I had constant nausea, just 24-7 nausea, and there'd be times where I would just lay down and I, I would just randomly vomit. Um, change in bowel functions, so either constipation or diarrhea. I don't remember having an issue with either of those. Um, I tend to eat fairly decent, even before I got sick I was decent. So, you know, I didn't have um, issues with that, I don't think. So chest pain or rib soreness. I had definite um, soreness in my lower right rib, which now I understand was likely liver pain. Shortness of breath or a cough. I had a constant, it was just a really soft <coughs> cough that would happen all the time. And I definitely had shortness of breath. I kind of class that as exercise intolerance. When I was trying to exercise, I just couldn't catch my breath. Almost felt like, um, I thought I had developed exercise induced asthma. Um, heart palpitations, pulse skips, or heart block. Um, definitely had some issues here. I developed what's called POTS, a P -O, it's an um, acronym, P-O-T-S. I can't remember what it stands for. I know the T and the S are, I think, like tra tach no, I probably pronounced it wrong, tachycardia syndrome. You can Google that. Um, or actually, <laughs> something I want to point out, I hardly ever use Google when I'm looking up he natural healing. I always use DuckDuckGo. Um, they don't really censor your access to natural healing sites. Um, so anyway, with the pots, I had, had like a lot of palpitations, just like the flip-flopping in your chest. Um, oh, I constantly felt like, a lot of times I felt like I was going to pass out when I would stand up. I just felt like I was going to pass out. And I noticed that in my resting heart rate when I was sitting versus when I would immediately stand up and take it, it would increase by about 20 beats a minute. Um, history of heart member or valve pro um, prolapse, I don't have that. Um, joint pain and swelling. Now, I did not have, some people will get the joint swelling that's like massive rheumatoid arthritis, the joints get hot. I did not have that, although I had a lot of joint pain. My knees, my ankle, hips. Um, stiffness of the neck or back, absolutely. The neck, it's like for me it was where the skull meets 
the base of your neck. Um, there's a lot of pain in there. And in my back, it's in between my shoulder blades, get a lot of pain, and then sciatic nerve flare-ups, um, muscle pains or cramps. Just random things will start hurting. <laughs> Twitching of the face or other muscles. Um, I got it in my fingers quite a bit. This is my, it seemed to be on the right side of my body was affected more than my left side. Thankfully, it was only one side. If I had to choose, I'd rather have one side than both. But anyway, the fingers um, got really twitchy for me. Um, headaches. The headaches are almost debilitating. It was just, um, for me, it felt like somebody had just stabbed me in behind my eyeball. Neck crack or stiffness. Yeah, we just talked about that. Um, for me, when I turn my head, even now, it just sounds like Rice Krispies in there kind of crackling away. Tingling, numbness, burning, or stabbing sensations. I had a lot of burning feelings in my feet, especially the balls of my feet when I would shower. Just something about the warm water made the balls of my feet burn. And I would get a lot of like tingling in the tips of my fingers. And I would get random tingling or like cold sensations. Um, it would be like just a portion of my cheek would feel really cold or I had like a part of my scalp would get tingly numb or half of my upper lip would get tingly numb. Facial paralysis, Bell's palsy, I didn't have that but I had read something, I think it was a patient who saw Dr. Klinghart and he had talked about Bell's palsy with this patient and she said that her Bell's palsy was so minute she didn't even notice it but it was just a very slight drooping. So I guess um, we could have that and not realize it's going on because it's so, it's not so as dramatic as other people get, but I didn't notice that in myself. Um, eyes, vision, double vision, blurry vision. I That was one of my first symptoms. My vision went very blurry to the point I, it made me nervous enough I went to the eye doctor. And then I started developing light sensitivity. That primarily affected me at work or if I was trying to go to the grocery store, anywhere that had the bright fluorescent lights. Ears, hearing buzzing, ringing, or ear pain. I, since I may flare up, I have had constant 24-7. I get no reprieve from the ringing and the buzzing in my ears. And then my right ear will oftentimes feel like it's full. Um, it doesn't necessarily hurt, it just feels full. And it's at the, the hearing in it is just kind of muted. Um, increased motion sickness or vertigo. I, I had dizziness, but I wouldn't say it was vertigo. I didn't feel like the room was spinning. If you've ever been on a boat all day, or I think I've heard it called like cruise, like if you've ever been on a cruise, I think you might get this sensation when you, when you get off the boat, you just feel like you're kind of rocking back and forth. I had that a lot. Um, lightheadedness, poor balance, difficulty walking. Yeah. Um, the lightheadedness for me, I think, was related to the pots that I talked about earlier. Poor balance, difficulty walking. When I'd wake up in the mornings trying to get out of bed, I'd fall right back down. I, I pretty much was as graceful as a newborn calf in the mornings trying to get out of bed. And I'd have to hang on to the walls to walk up and down the hallway. Tremors, I don't remember having um, issues with that. Confusion, difficulty thinking. Absolutely, one of my primary things is um, cognitive dysfunction. Um, so I'll just kind of go through. This is um, confusion, difficulty thinking, difficulty with concentration or reading, forgetfulness, poor short-term memory, disorientation, getting lost, going to the wrong places. Those are um, different items themselves, but they all kind of go together. So for me, like I said, I was heavily affected neurologically. I had a terrible time even trying to read a book because I, my short-term memory was so bad. I couldn't remember what I had just read. Forgetfulness is so bad. I could put something on. The, I'll just tell you this. I know that my smoke alarms work very well because I have left things on the stove way too many times. Um, just concentration's horrible. <clears throat> Easily distracted. Just constantly feel like there's brain fog or kind of just feel like you're in a dream. Um, when I wake up, I always feel hungover when I wake up, and then that kind of dissipates as the day goes on. Um, so disorientation, getting lost, going to the wrong places. I. I've been going to the same grocery store for seven years. It's literally five, six minutes from my house and I couldn't figure out how to get there. Um, one, oh, in one point, I, um, walk, I walked into the restroom at work from my desk, not a long walk at all, and I got into the bathroom and turned around and I didn't know where I was. Um, so, I mean, obviously I was in the restroom, but I, you know, for some reason I thought, I don't even know what floor of the building I'm on. I did not remember walking to the bathroom from my desk. That's how bad my short-term memory got. I started, um, so the difficulty with speech and writing, I started spelling my words phonetically. And I had a list of symptoms that I took to my second doctor's appointment. And that handwriting is not my handwriting. Like, it's super chicken scratchy. Uh, I read somewhere that that's um, a possible indicator about the central nervous system being on overdrive. Mood swings, irritability, depression. There's a thing called Lyme rage. There's a thing called Bart rage. Imagine having them both. You're, 
absolutely irrational um, to get through that I just had to tell myself like this is literally a bacteria causing this like this is not how I feel <laughs> disturbed sleep too much too little early awakening yep um, you'll never I just never feels like I can get enough sleep so I yeah I feel like sleeping more but it's just pointless because it's not going to make me feel better so um, I kind of just forced myself to get up in the very beginning I struggled horribly with insomnia horribly I still don't necessarily get into a deep sleep where I'm dreaming I have started dreaming again which is cool but um, not not constantly getting into that deep state Oops, sorry, buddy. Um, exaggerated symptoms or worse hangover from alcohol and that was one of my first things before I knew I had Lyme I didn't uh, I you know I'm gonna go out and have fun on the weekends and my hangovers will be two or three days long and I just blame that on my age thinking well I guess I'm getting older I can't drink anymore but it was I mean ridiculous feeling like I feel really really dizzy and just couldn't get out of bed for the day um, and it wasn't like I had drank enough to even rationalize that sort of hangover so definitely one of my first symptoms and then fatigue I feel like we've talked about that is that like the third time they brought that up you know beating a dead horse here fatigue crushing fatigue I think everyone who's had Lyme will tell you that is one of the worst symptoms forgetfulness poor short-term memory we just talked about that joint or pain swelling we already touched on that tingling numbness burning or stabbing sensations um, I would get stabbing sensations through my abdomen and I said like my headaches felt like I was being stabbed as well Oops, I got a little. Oh, there's my dog. <laughs> um, those are my animals making a guest appearance. I knew they would. Anyway, <laughs> um, so let's we'll see. Disturbed sleep, too much, too little, early awakening. Well, those were kind of repeats for some reason, but I guess they want to drive that point home. <laughs> um, and then uh, there were a few on here or that I wrote down that weren't on this list. I developed multiple chemical sensitivities, so it was hard for me to be around um, people who were wearing perfume or cologne. Those two affected me especially, and floor cleaners. Like For some reason, floor cleaners really bothered me. They'd give me a headache, and certain candles. I can't really burn candles that much anymore. Not this time, anyway. I went through what's called depersonalization, so it just constantly felt like I was in a dream. I didn't feel connected. Um, the best way I've read to describe this is Imagine something you really care about and there's a string attached between you and that thing you care about. You only think about that thing that you really care about as long as you the string is connected to it, but once you like leave the room and the string goes with you, you kind of forget about that thing. So there's just like a an emotional detachment from everything, not like in a sociopathic or narcissistic way, it's just, um, I don't know, you just feel like you're observing things like you're in a dream. It's, it's a weird feeling. Um, so I my inflammation was so bad. I think this was because of inflammation. I always felt like I was being choked. So I'd have to wear, like, I wore the sweatshirt probably all the time because it's so open. It was hard for me to have anything touching my neck at all. Definitely no necklaces. Um, there's anything that got too close. I felt like I was being choked. Um, so I had issues with my body temperature. It dropped to 96.9 and just kind of stayed there. I've always been 98.8 as my normal. So almost a two degree drop in body temperature and now I just took it actually it's 97.7 it seems to be hanging around there so it's getting better um, I'm not sure why that is or what's causing that I'd like for it to get back up into the normal range and then my blood pressure dropped it was 85 over 55 and then it just got really wonky all over the place like my top number would be 150 but my bottom number would be 60 um, normal for me was like 115 over 60 to 65 so it just kind of got all over the place there. And then um, I was having a lot of gallbladder aches. I have, I never even knew where my gallbladder was before all this. And now I, it's if I was eating something fatty, I could just really feel it pinching. And then um, one thing I noticed when I was looking through my blood work from the time, so I went to my doctor because I had a rash in the beginning. They told me I didn't have Lyme. But I, so from that time until the time I figured out what was going on, I'd had my blood drawn, I can't tell you how many times. And I looked through it all, and you could just watch my white blood cell count drop, 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 until it was the very minimum um, reading before they would consider it low. So that was just something I wanted to point out. And I'd actually tried to, before I knew I was sick, I tried to donate, I can't remember if I was trying to donate blood or plasma, and I got deferred because my hemoglobin count was low. Um, so I never had any issues with things being low like that before, so just something of interest I thought I'd throw out there. Um, then there's the, anyway, the next section of this is Lyme, of this um, score checklist. It talks about, you know, rashes. So I did have a rash. I had, um, I'm going to put a link in the description 
to show you all the different rashes because that's why this mess happened to me. My doctor didn't know to recognize my rash as a Lyme rash because it was a classic bullseye. So I did have a rash around the bite and I had a decimated rash up my leg. Um, <clears throat> but I was told we don't have Lyme in my state. I beg to differ, but anyway. And then this talks about, you know, muscle and joint pain again. I think, you know, we're just really driving home a lot of the same symptoms for some reason, but um, one thing that is, I think, a little bit different from the muscle and joint pain with Lyme is that it's migratory. So just every day, every couple of days, something else will flare up. Um, yeah, it talks again about burning. We're kind of going over the same symptoms again. Have you ever been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia? Those are common misdiagnoses. Um, and then it also, it's also asking, have you been diagnosed with lupus, MS, rheumatoid arthritis, or nonspecific autoimmune disorder? So, you know, they tried to diagnose me with MS. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention too, like I lost control of my gripping for a while. Like I was just dropping a lot of things. So I'd be carrying a glass of water and I'd just drop it. So they did test me for MS. Oh, I did um, an MRI and then I don't remember what else I did, but they concluded it wasn't MS. You know, everything was always fine. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So I'm going to leave this checklist, uh, the link to this checklist. And then I have another one that I'm going to leave the link to as well. It's basically just driving home the same points, but you know, we can never have too much information, can we? So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to go through my symptoms a little bit more specifically and uh, just get this out there. If you feel like you know, you're having a mystery illness, maybe go ahead and check out this um, checklist and see what you think.